Bingo Hello. was oh shit. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Bingo was his name oh, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> So they were playing Tarkaron Bingo. Tarkaron Bingo. <laughs> that would be <laughs> there the there? worst <laughs> Coliseum of all time. <laughs> Tarkaron Bingo. I don't know how that would work. Like, but you have to do it like Better Call Saul, where you start having a breakdown talking about your brother in the middle of it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, <laughs> iconic, most iconic bingo in television history, you might say. Kind of, really. Uh, honestly. <laughs> honestly, real shame Better Call Saul did not win a single Emmy. I think that's a... I think you get robbed. All right. Welcome, everybody, to our season review of Survivor Fiji. That's right. That's right. Yeah. I'm I'm excited. I'm excited because we get to recap uh, season... I, I think I was a little down on, on Survivor Fiji as a whole overall, but I think it, it kind of won me back in the, in the back half and... Mm. Uh, and but I'm still excited. I, I was like talking about this. I feel like there's in, some interesting things that should be able to come up in conversation. Yeah, I'm curious as if that we had some questions about certain things, certain moves, and and so on and so forth. So I, I'm always good. Always a good thing to sort of recap and, and solidify uh, thoughts about a season. There's a lot so. of uh, material to cover here. A lot of stuff. So uh, yeah. try to be as brief as possible. But you know, it could be it could be a long one. We got a lot of uh, a lot of different things to cover. Some things that were like not shown on the show that that people take issue with. There's some uh, interesting. Oh, there's some other. Um, oh. There's a lot to get to. I'll just say that. And um, huh? if you're new to the channel, though, it's worth noting that Alec has been watching Survivor for the first time chronologically. So he's only seen the first thirteen. Well, now the first fourteen seasons. All right, so he doesn't know what's to come. So anything we discuss or review will not will be in the context of that. Uh, we won't mm -hmm. be talking about any future seasons or anything like that. And I'm a big Survivor fan, though, so I'm taking them along. This was my second time watching the season, but still always feels fresh, you know, watching it again. Mm. And yeah, so Zach curates all the all the comments and stuff like that. I don't I don't get to look at any of that stuff. So you can feel free to talk about spoilers and stuff in all the you know comments and things. I'm not looking at yeah. any of it. I'm not looking ahead. I'm not Googling anything. I don't Google anything about Survivor. So, um, yeah, it's yeah, and it's keeping sworn to secrecy. Yeah. It's kind of it's kind of nice to do it to do it that way. It's a lot of fun. And and if you want to see more Survivor videos from us, we have hundreds of Survivor videos in the channel. We do actually episode by episode reaction and discussion, so you can watch his firsthand reactions to the episode itself and then highlighted form and then we'll have a discussion mm. for each episode and then we always do a season review to top it off really breaking everything down in depth with more context and seeing the season as a whole and then at the end of this review we'll do survivors superlatives where he'll be giving out a couple of awards and then we'll be ranking the season against the other seasons and the winner against the other winners and it'll be great it'll be great but I think a little thing to, to kick things off has become a little tradition now is to just show the, the DVD cover for the season. All right. Right, just, right. It's always interesting to see because obviously Laid you can't look here. at a DVD cover without getting the whole season spoiled, you know? Yeah, which is kind of weird Naturally. to say. What the heck? So, <laughs> got a couple of interesting, interesting inclusions selections on here. here. That's right. Yeah. They they swapped out Stacy and Boo for Michelle and Alex here in the final six. What's up with that? <laughs> Why is that? I don't know. Maybe they're the, <laughs> curious. They're just like uh, more youthful. I don't know. Maybe know. maybe they wanted to get more youth on the uh, youth on the cover. They're probably like more memorable on the season. Maybe I don't know. A Alex, maybe you know. Take him Alex was and... pretty memorable. He kind of he kind of ruined. Yeah, he kind of ruined himself <laughs> at the end there, but. Yeah. But uh, yeah. But we got Earl. Okay, interesting. Earl, Michelle, yeah. Yao up top, Sandra, Dreams, Alex down there. All right. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, hey. That's all there is to it. Is what it is. Is what it is. <clears throat> yeah. Um. And another, I'm gonna send you this link. Oh, okay. Um. This is our main document and ever, but I just put a picture on the on the front of uh, 
of it. This is the document where we have all our rankings and stuff, but I just put a picture in here. Right. You know, it's not going to mean anything to you. But this this, is this right here is Melissa McNulty, the fabled uh, person who quit she, moments before the game began. I was going to say, is she the 20th contestant that didn't show up? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's Oh, my a, gosh. <laughs> is, I think, she's... She's gorgeous yeah, she's for one thing. This is an amazing. Yeah. Oh, this is an amazing picture. Yeah, I guess that makes sense that she's a model. This is an amazing picture, framing and everything, man. But yeah, I wow. guess this was like like she had done gone through the whole process. So it's some. I don't know how or when it got out, like the actual like her, her cast photo and everything. But it was because then I know she was like cropped huh. out of like some cast images and stuff. Interesting. But yeah, yeah, but this is like the high. This is like a high quality picture, basically. They uploaded. Wow. That's fair. I mean, it's never before been seen on Survivor. There have been last minute um, switch outs in in the past. Yeah. But never has anyone like been so well, last minute that they couldn't switch them out. Well, they even said Earl was like kind of last minute casting. Yeah. In yeah. the reunion, they said he was like the weekend of basically the weekend they were making the decision. So this was like that last minute. So did. Now maybe this is getting too into the weeds already, but like, is there a reason as to why she decided to? But I don't remember if we covered that uh, to begin with. Yeah, I, I did mention it she... a little bit. It was um, she just had some like severe panic attacks, basically, and then oh. they and they deemed her like unfit to play the game. So yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, hey, I, I get it. I I definitely have I have a couple friends that um. I mean, even just going on like long flights places and like staying away from where they like their their home or whatever is just like anxiety inducing for them. So like I I get it, you know. Yeah. Uh, so that's that's Melissa McNulty. Uh, <laughs> all right, well, a name that surprisingly a lot of people in the Survivor community just know from this. <laughs> <laughs> interesting, inter- very interesting. Okay, well, it's a name I I. We'll probably forget down the line, but <laughs> okay. Melissa McNulty. I mean, it kind of has a ring to it. It's got you know, a nice I ring get, to you know, I kind of, a nice ring to it. You know, yeah. So. And I love, <laughs> I just love how we started the season, and they're like, for the first time ever, nineteen players. Yeah, it's yeah. like, oh, that's kind of a weird because it's a different. It's like, uh... <laughs> like you didn't want it to be nineteen players. Yeah, you, you wanted to be twenty again. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> what are you talking about? But it was like right in the so. intro, like the first few seconds of the show, he was like, <laughs> after a last minute quit, uh, it's something, something. And no, I like, was like, yeah. what? The build up? <laughs> yeah. So stupid. <laughs> but, <laughs> but so, anyway. so this season was filmed from October to December of 2006, and then it was aired February to May of 2007. All right. We're moving through the 2000s okay. here. Yeah. Um, blasting through. There's a couple key things that people look back on on the season. Um, now, mostly I would say that the Survivor fan community doesn't view this season particularly highly. And uh, yeah. I think it comes down to a couple things. One of them being the haves versus have nots twists. Um, which Hated, is, that. <laughs> which is Hated that. Hated that. Interesting. I really did not like that at all. <laughs> Where we we talked about it a lot in the pre merge, it seems like a distant memory at this point. But it's like you do you do a challenge in the beginning, uh, right after you're divided into tribes. The winner of this challenge, uh, that tribe will get the luxurious camp, and the losing tribe will just be stuck with the actual survivor experience. And uh, it's not like you reshuffle it every time. It's like nope, that's just your camp now, and you're stuck with that. Yeah, for some I was time. like. I was so confused about that they didn't shuffle it around. I felt like that would be something worth, like having, like a like a a tussling between back and forth. Right. So then you have to like determine, okay, which of my items do I bring to the challenge, and like what do I leave behind? And then so there's there's like a there's sort of like a give and take element to it. But they didn't do that, and I was very confused as to why they didn't. So it quickly became a rich get richer thing, and then even yeah, even like easily. by the time they do a few rounds in, they do a a good old message in a bottle that Jeff opens up where it's like, (laughs) he's like, you can either give up your immunity or you can give up your luxury camp. So think about it nice and hard. And they're like, yeah, we'll give up immunity. Yeah. We're keeping our, uh, yeah. They instantaneously decided that. It's not freaking ridiculous. And they did that. 
So even then, it did not uh, change. Uh, <laughs> they tried, but yeah, it's yeah. But it became a point where it's like, okay, well, now the this tribe is winning. They're winning immunities. They're also winning rewards on top of like they're living in a, in a camp with like silverware and a coffee machine and beds. Yeah. And now they're also winning the other rewards on top of that. It's kind of crazy. Yeah. And then not not ideal. Not it wasn't. I, yeah, I definitely the first half of the season was not fun to really to watch. <laughs> I mean, there's elements of it that were kind of goofy and entertaining and enjoyable, but it's like, yeah, it was kind of. I didn't like that for sure. And then another um, big thing that people criticize about the season is there was a lot left out of, in terms of an edit for the season in the pre-merge. Um, Interesting. Uh, we got a, f- a couple comments mentioning that. Um, so essentially, like there were, there were a couple of big alliances that were completely mm-hmm. omitted from the edit of the show for whatever reason. They were pretty much from like postseason interviews and stuff seemed to be what determined the trajectory of the season early on. But like instead, we, instead we got these things like you know Rita, Rocky being annoyed with Rita, like talking talking too much or whatever, you know, stuff like that. But yeah. really there were these alliances. So someone sent me a link to the post, which kind of breaks it down. Hmm. Yeah. I'd like to know about that. If, the, if there was a little bit of a weird or a kind of a, a controversial edit so, to, the, yeah. to the show here. To... Survivor one, two, three, four sent me a link to this. I do remember seeing okay. this a while ago too on Reddit. Um, There were basically day one alliances on Fiji, which had a huge impact on the game. And people will find it really weird that they were kind of left out of the the show with no context. Um, This this person says that Liliana was instrumental in this, who got one of the most invisible edits ever, even though she actually had a huge impact on the entire course of that season. Because people were, uh, apparently they were thinking in the beginning when they just dropped them off there, like without meeting Jeff and everything, they just dropped them off on the beach People started thinking mm-hmm. that maybe there would be no tribes and they would just have to, like, this would be what we're rocking with, all, like, all 19 people at once. So they immediately made, like, a 10-person alliance. Um, oh, wow. I think Rocky was one of the people in this. It was it was a bit, essentially turned into the Explorers versus, versus the Builders alliance. So there were just people that were that happened to be exploring the area outside of camp. They, they were like the Explorer Alliance. Um, and you said that Dreams betrayed this alliance to the other nine players who were back at camp building the shelter, who in retaliation formed their own alliance, the Shelter Builders, and Dreams was a swing vote between the two. Uh, meanwhile, two alliances ah. were formed between, it was like an all-black and all-Hispanic alliance that they kind of like banded together and made sub alliances within those um interesting here let me just i'll just read it how they said they say sylvia a shelter builder was in charge of dividing the tribes and also incorrectly assumed she'd be allowed to pick her tribe when she was done she divided the tribe specifically to split up the explorers sending most of them to ravu and stacked moto with an explorer minority liliana edgardo and alex and shelter builder majority and also contestants weaker than her, which were Papa Smurf, Cassandra, and Lisi. But Sylvia wasn't able to choose to join Moto and ended up on Ravu. The Interesting. The shelter builder minority on Ravu survived the first two tribal councils by spreading paranoia among the explorers that Rocky, the explorer leader on their tribe, was too close to Jessica and Erica, which was the main reason they were voted out, rather than poor challenge performance, which is what we saw on the show. Mm-hmm. On Moto, Liliana worked out that Dreams had betrayed the explorers and warned Edgardo and Alex not to trust him, which is why later on they didn't want him to know they had an idol. Um, Lisi invited Edgardo and Alex into the Alliance of Five based on their earlier Hispanic alliance, who in turn invited Liliana to join. Though the edit portrayed Liliana was an outsider, she was a member of the Alliance along with Edgardo, Alex, Boo, Lisi, and Stacy until the latter three betrayed her. Uh, thus, Lisi's It's an Alliance of Five, Not Six voting confessional. 
Lacey, Stacy, and Boo became paranoid that Liliana may, might reunite the remnants of the Explorer Alliance post-merge or post-swap and get Egardo and Alex to flip on them, which is the real reason they gave up immunity to vote her out and why they voted her out over Cassandra, who had originally been a shelter builder with them. Um. It's... <laughs> why is why was all this stuff left out? i mean like i get i get have pairing some of this down but like especially like the beginning part of like the builders and the that would have been so much that would have made the 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 first episode so much more like yeah. interesting to have that to have that context going into everything and so it's kind of weird they're also being um hold on, there was another comment for this too yeah so the uh survivor one two three four also said that there are other two alliances there was also two alliances between the black and all Latinx racial alliances. These two alliances were consistently clashing, leading to some of the racism at Final Tribal. Uh, a particular area of concern was that the Latinx alliance would all speak and strategize in Spanish to each other in front of the non-Spanish speaking tribe mates, which would anger people. This is where you get the comment at Final Tribal where Alex asked Cassandra if she would like a translation. Okay. So yeah, that was what was confusing me, not knowing this context initially. Was I'm like, I'm like, where did that come like, from? Like, where like, did that? Well, Alex. Well, Alex is is the Spanish speaker one. So it's weirdly like him. It sounds like he's being racist towards Cassandra, but he's really saying like, "Would you like a translation of of me?" Because because they were at each other before like speaking Spanish early on. So I mean, interesting. Interesting. Okay, that adds a lot more context to that now, because that seemed to come out of complete. Probably, that seemed to come out of nowhere. Yeah, probably why they didn't, of probably why he didn't call out Alex during uh, the reunion because he's gonna be like, hey, actually, Jeff, there was this whole thing that went on that was not on the show. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> so this is a yeah, big. That's uh, so. Yeah. That's so interesting, and I, I, that makes so much more sense why, why that would anger people that you can't understand. Right. That makes so much more sense. Yeah. Wow. Interesting. I mean, hey, I, I'm I'm all of the I'm of the opinion if you've got it, use it. If you have that advantage, use it. I mean, you know, no offense to uh the deaf girl from the previous seasons, uh what was her name? Christy. Because that was kind of an unfortunate thing where she Christy was sort of left out of, of stuff, which is mm -hmm. unfortunate, but I mean I, I if you have that in your toolkit and you have other like if you have other other uh Spanish speakers, like absolutely go for it. You know? But but as somebody who can't, I know I know first and foremost I would get mad. <laughs> like, I would definitely be mad if that was happening to me and there were people were talking and I was like, "Cool, thanks. I'm glad I'm yeah. left out." <laughs> so I have no idea what they're saying. They could be saying all kinds of horrible things against me. But so that's one of the biggest things yeah. that people bring up. Um, maybe huh. not not so much the racial alliances from what I hear in the general discussion. I hear like the builders versus explorers alliance. The fact that that was admitted too yeah um that's like a big negative feel have for the season on top of oh the haves versus have nots oh, the has, uh, yeah haves versus have nots yeah yeah so yeah under under edited early half or at least even just first couple of episodes yeah i mean because that does also give context to like why why you'd initially be like you don't trust dreams because dreams already has flipped mm -hmm. on an alliance yeah. yeah and also worth noting that all th he also says all three of Earl, Cassandra, and Dreams were disappointed with the way the show handled their alliance and the way they were treated outside of the game. All three of them summarize their opinion much better than I can on the Black Voices podcast series on Rob Has a Podcast, so I advise you to listen to their own words. However, since Alec can't listen to spoilery podcasts, I'll summarize some of their points below. They said okay. the show never brings up their all black alliance or almost any of the frequent discussions they had regarding their experiences being black in life or on Survivor. Instead, the show played up Earl's relationship with the Yao Man, which was definitely real, but not as strong as they made on the show. They were prevented from making appearances or speeches about Survivor and radio, TV, or even schools that have a primarily black demographic. They were also never invited to any future Survivor reunions, despite living near where they film. And... Earl was particularly disappointed that the Survivor production team were so ready to insult a season that produced an all-black final three, saying it would discourage other black people from applying. That's based on his uh, summarization of that. Huh. Summation. I mean, that's that that's that's rough to hear. Mm -hmm. Rough so, to hear. 
he um, did mention his his first point. Actually, I skipped down to some of the stuff. His first point he had in this okay. comment were that he says the season's probably the closest the show has ever been to getting canceled. I feel like we get this comment every time. It's yeah. Like, oh, I, feel like we, I feel this. like we got this. So he said, this he said a similar thing with Cook Islands, time. but um, yeah. He said it was hated by audiences being considered the worst season besides Thailand. Jeff also badmouthed the season publicly, which is pretty rare for a host of a show, which I guess is uh, kind of where Earl was coming from. The fact that they were speaking poorly of the season, given there was an all black final three might discourage other black people from applying. It's that's interesting because I, I that's so fascinating that he points that out. Cause I remember Earl saying that I feel like kind of near the finale talking about that. It's an all black final three. And like being pretty hype about that, but mm. then that was that they they had never brought that up before. Yeah, and it was like it was like never really like a thing, which is that's, huh? Yeah, yeah that's so weird. In that's like kinda, the two, that's I feel like the two thousands and early on, people like shied away from acknowledging like weirdly, even though they just had a season where they where they for the first time divided things by race, yeah. and now this one they're like we're gonna make a point to have a diverse cast to show that that wasn't just for last season. Right. Even though this was the last season they would do that for until much later. Um, but then it's so like, I, yeah. I, I'm going to, I'm going to say something here. I think some of this has to do with, remember CBS primarily the demographic of CBS, old white people mm-hmm. primarily. I, I mean, I don't think that's a controversial take. I, so Targeting, so thinking of executives, particularly in the mid two thousands, targeting the quote unquote urban market that is that is typically seen uh, or targeted by other networks. Um, I think UPN still existed at this point. I know they that was like a huge. T- that was basically like the black people channel. Like that's that's what it was sort of known as. Like that was kind of the stereotype for it. It also had Star Trek, but um, but like. I feel like that's, it's just such a weird thing. It's like, no, we have to stick to our, like, we, it's almost like stick to your lane, stick to what you know, instead of like trying to, trying to maybe get more of an audience. It was sort of like, oh, we can't, I don't know. We mm-hmm. can't have, we can't, we can't be going too far in that way. Cause who yeah. knows what that'll, what that'll sort of bring in. It's just such a weird. You know, we <laughs> can't have know, black people talking just... about their experiences, you know? Yeah. We can't have black people talking tired. about their experiences. That's a horrible, it's like, come on. <laughs> <laughs> that's 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 so rough. That's so that's rough. discouraging. I you know I, yeah I guess uh, one thing that's positive. I hope I hope I don't think TV executives think like that anymore. I mean they probably some of them <laughs> almost certainly do. But um yeah I mean it gets much they've gotten much better recently. But it took a long time for them to fully get there. But of course they get it naturally got better yeah. with like having certain topics discussed on 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 TV and whatnot. But mm-hmm. to have this like. The fact that they did this fully diverse cast for Cook Islands and then they did it again for this one to kind of make a point that like it wasn't just for yeah. that. And then from here on out, yeah, it's, for them it's, to... it's, uh, it's back to what we were before these two seasons up until like season 41. <laughs> so it's a long yeah. time before they actually yeah, it's... go for the <clears throat> diversity. But... Yeah, yeah, it is a little weird that they like, I don't know. It's just, did they think that, that, having like having Earl or having dreams sort of talk about their experiences as black men or Cassandra as a black woman, would you think that that would like turn off the audience or something like their audience of primarily old white people? Maybe. And maybe, maybe they thought that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. People weren't as, as thoughtful back then. They really weren't. It was just like, yeah, they were perfectly content for most of the season, just having like one black person, or like in like two two minority representatives tops like per season, you know? And then just yeah. have like John, Brooke, John, Chris. John. John <laughs> it's like, it's like, John. It's like this is Greg, what we want, right? Greg. This is what we want. But it's like this the criticisms that people give for these two seasons, Cook Islands and Fiji, were not the cast. Like there's some great cast no. there. Like this we've just said is some of the best casting we had. I don't think it's a coincidence and then it feels like they're conflating 
the the criticism they receive with like oh, okay maybe we need to go back to 80 percent white people <laughs> it's like it's like no maybe you don't throw in like message in a bottle and uh yeah maybe weird twists and stuff like that yeah they're like the michelle twist like seriously yeah that was another one one of the worst things <laughs> one of the worst things that, one of the worst things on this show so far i mean there's been a couple <laughs> of stinkers but boy that was a <laughs> that mm-hmm. was bad um so yeah with that being said um another one of the big thing things that the season's remembered for is the car deal uh, of course it's it's iconic yeah. i still i still love it um, yeah there were uh there was talks so, uh, for a long time that dreams was not dreams could not get the car because he couldn't afford the taxes on it or something but i, I heard apparently that's not true that be, that has almost become like, um, very commonly said. Like he actually couldn't get the car because he couldn't afford the taxes. But I heard that he was on a podcast a few years back saying that he actually switched it for a different car or something. He just switched it for something. Yeah, else. they probably let. I was gonna say they probably would let you do that, and that would that would help with with the taxes that you'd have to pay. But also, he had some. He came in third, so right, third or second. That was unclear. Tied for me. second, third. Yeah. Tied for second. So they get, I mean, they get some money out of that. So, I mean, he'd have to be taxed on that too. But I think, I yeah. feel like, I feel like that would also help pay for the taxes on, you know, on the car. Mm-hmm. So, some for context for this is worth noting is that, um, it's been talked about that everybody had agreed before this challenge that whoever wins will let dreams have the car like basically everybody agreed to this ahead of time going into the show oh interesting and interesting then, and yao man took it and and made a deal out of it you know and yao man has has since said like he thought he was going to be the the villain of the season after coming out because he like took advantage of a poor person needing a car to make a deal yeah so yeah I'm probably surprised to get like a bit of a uh, a good hero edit you might say <laughs> he he got the hero edit but that's because they didn't they didn't show them all agreeing that they would give dreams the car <laughs> so yeah yeah <laughs> well i think they might have given him the hero hero edit because of what happened to him you know a couple episodes later essentially so or yeah that's still great i mean the, the for one episode. of the best finale episodes that we've seen the fact yeah, that it was really it exciting. worked out that perfectly that Dreams won the final four immunity. We had all the drama mm-hmm. up until the last second. I do think I remembered hearing somewhere that he would um he would have given the immunity to Yao Man, like if they had done it before Tribal Council, like he would have given mm-hmm. it to him. But um like if he talked about like if he talked to him about it or something beforehand? I forget what it was exactly, but I don't think anyone mentioned this here. Um, but I felt like it was something like Yao Man was like, no, no, you can give it to me at, at tribal council or something. And like, yeah. then in the moment, like as Jeff asked him that question, he's like, um, no, I'll keep it. Like after thinking yeah. about it. <laughs> so timing is everything. Yeah. Like all these little things can change. Um, yeah. Another great moment of yeah. course is the, Idol play. We saw the the first use of a new hidden immunity idol here. Yeah, um, pretty pretty hype. I think this is definitely we've only seen it once used successfully here, and it already seems to be much better than the previous um, mechanism for hidden immunity idol. Oh, this was so much better. This is so much better than the previous systems for sure. Because we had in yeah. Cook Islands and Panama was the one where you. Essentially, if you got the most votes, then you would be able to use it. Uh, yeah. But of course, that never even came to a head because if you get laid enough into the game and it's like, well, we're not going to vote for you if we don't have enough votes to, to vote for you, if you're just going to be able to use it afterwards, regardless. Right. And then the first time they used it in Guatemala was where Gary Hogaboom right. he used it before, every, and you had to use it before anyone even voted. So. Right. You it technically might have been the the first success, successful idol play because uh, mm-hmm. it seemed like they were going to vote for Gary, but we just didn't get to see it like we did for Yao Man, and um, yeah, and that was that's the hype. I mean, you get the you get the suspense of it. 
you get the you have to make a read about it and all that the drama that comes with that. Yeah, that was just super exciting about that. Yeah, for sure. Survivor one two three four had commented on the episode thirteen reaction uh, where young man okay. makes the deal. Um, he said, "Of course, this is all based on what he said. I don't. I, I didn't hear this before." So I can't confirm it, but he did say that Yao Man said uh, after the, like, I guess after the fact at some point, he said he knew to play the idol because he could read the camera people doing the confessionals, not because he could read the players, because essentially they started asking him about the idol and confessional when they never did before. And so interesting. Okay. So he was, he was, he's kind of started to get the bad vibes, maybe from that from production like and then i was like oh well okay and i think some of that is still involved with probably some reading some people but like i feel like that that's gonna tip you off immediately be like oh that's yeah what's going on with that yeah okay interesting (laughs) i mean we've heard of things like this before like people getting tipped off by certain things danny famously uh, beat the radar because she didn't want to tell people <laughs> tell them too much in confessionals and fear that it would get back to other people but since since this I mean I've never heard of anything like this before I think they just did not know how to appropriately handle the idol like this being the first time it's it was used this way they didn't think about oh if mm. we start asking now then he's gonna know so, yeah. yeah so <clears throat> that's interesting yeah, they probably they might not they might not have even thought that they were tipping him off by asking him about it. Yeah. We did have the return of Exile Island. We've had that for a few seasons now. And we also had with the Hidden Immunity Idol, the fact that it was being hidden back at camp this time around, as opposed to on mm. Exile Island. And you get clues from Exile Island for that. So these are all different they made it more... interesting twists to the formula. Yeah, that one made it more interesting too because that, like yeah, they tended to be in areas that were, I mean, either like right at camp or somewhere relatively close to camp as well, or somewhere that would be noticed by other people if you you know went off looking for it. So I found that kind of interesting because it made you made you really like uh, made use of the time uh, in per- in particular ways in order for them to kind of like. Yeah, get in there and, and find it. So yeah, it encourages working with people like, like they almost Yao yeah. and Earl almost felt like they needed to share this information or to pull it off. Like yeah. it's not every every day you get a chance, like a significant amount of time by yourself to be digging around. So yeah, you had that, and then you had the four horsemen kind of sharing the the info on the idol there too. Interesting uh, little tidbit here that I had actually forgotten by the end of it, but you, you'll hear okay. Jeff and Earl talking about how um, Earl received every vote to win in the end, and he, he never received a vote against him. But this actually wasn't true. In uh, the third tribal council, Rita did vote for Earl, and people just seem to forget this uh, fact. So you, so you received uh-huh. one vote. Okay. Um, Interesting. So there's it, <laughs> just a little asterisk on it because people always like to say that it's like the perf- first like yeah. perfect win, the quote unquote, you know, it's but, like, but it wasn't you get every yeah. vote. You didn't, you didn't get any votes against you, <laughs> but near it's close to it. You're perfect. You did get the first unanimous vote for the winner. Nine to yeah. zero to zero. Yeah. Um, I think Earl is great. Um, probably the, the biggest knock against him is the fact that, he thought he it seemed like he thought he was going to go against Yao Man in the end, and it was just kind of like yeah. he was even surprised that dreams went back on the deal, and kind of it kind of helped him in the end accidentally without him even yeah. intending for it to. It helped, and he was just kind of like, okay, I'll vote, yeah. I'll vote for him now. But it yeah. was he was already planning. On, he was saying in the reunion he was already planning on what he was going to say against Yao Man, but which I would have loved to see like how that would have gone because yeah. You know, I think that would have been wonderful. I, I, that's that to me would have been I, the ideal right there. Yeah. It's like because it's hard to see who would have come out on top there. I I feel like Yao Man might have, but people might have favored Earl. I don't know. Yeah, it, I mean, it looks yeah. like Yao Man was favored, but uh, every, and 
it's hard to take anything people say when they when they ask for votes months later after they've seen the show. It's like exactly. raise your hand if months you're gonna vote for Yao Man, who's the that's, fan favorite of the season. Uh, that's yeah. the thing. That's the thing that's like I can't. Yeah, you can't really trust that so well because it's like they've already they've all watched the show. Like they've so they're seeing so much more information yeah. they hadn't they were not privy to. So. so, I mean, the way they talked in confessional seemed like everybody did view him as the number one threat. I mean, they tried to vote him out earlier, yeah. and um, people seemed to speak very highly of him. But, you know, it's always possible that Earl could have come out with some ammunition that we didn't get to see mm. in Final Travel. Yeah. I really would have been curious to hear what his arguments, what arguments he was forming against him. But, yeah, yeah ultimately, it was kind of like... Everybody just like targeting Cassandra and Dreams the whole time. Like, how could you do this? You're awful. Just shitting on them the yeah, whole time. And Earl is just sitting so back. So weird. Like, hey. Sitting back like, all right, cool. Yeah, nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you get to just, he just get the, the king sits pretty, you know, yeah. using that ism, you know, from the previous season. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, we mentioned it a little bit briefly, but there was also the controversial twist at the merge to... Uh, randomly shuffle into two more groups just for one vote. Yep. And ultimately, Michelle got screwed out of it. Um, yep. <laughs> got boned. Um, yeah, pretty much. Um, speaking of Michelle getting boned, <laughs> there, there was a, a very popular rumor at the time of this uh, season <laughs> that <Uh-oh. laughs> very popular. Like, I heard this so much that. I'm interested uh, Michelle now. Michelle had an orgy with the four horsemen at, at Ponderosa. So very... <laughs> Why? Why is this a rumor? <laughs> um, um, so what I've heard since is that there was um, a future Survivor player actually um, had on has spoken since about like being on like forums or something and sharing this mm. this detail that Michelle had an orgy with the four horsemen mm-hmm. at Ponderosa but um <laughs> it sounds like it, it sounds like such an event the Michelle orgy at <laughs> Ponderosa with the four horsemen <laughs> but i don't know if uh like cuz apparently there was something about like Sylvia had told this person that she that um Michelle had slept with Edgardo and Rocky at, at Ponderosa, and then it turned into orgy. So I don't know if when they say it turned into orgy, does that mean that she did sleep with these guys? It just wasn't an orgy? And that Maybe. was the, the, the yeah, uh, embellished rumor? I don't know. I don't know the actual but, truth of it. But it's pretty wild. Yeah, <laughs> regardless, it's wild. <laughs> Not you know, it's kind of wild. It's kind of rocky, oh rocky, God. rocking it up up there. Yeah, he's all Jeez. bricked up. <laughs> it's just Let me rocky. see. I'm sure there, there was a comment about it somewhere. <laughs> yeah, Chase Fair, <laughs> Chase Fair so just listed wild. things to talk about, and one of them was supposedly yeah. Michelle had an orgy with the horseman at Ponderosa. I just throw that. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the funniest thing in the world. It's so wild. Uh, someone had responded. I, don't, I thought. I guess they were just like, oh, everyone smells good now. So I guess let's just have at it. Just bang uh, each other's brains out. Um, yeah, so Rover 1234 had mentioned that the, the rumors behind the orgies at Ponderosa are also completely exaggerated off of minimal evidence that exists. So I'm just putting this here so that uh, neither of these things are treated as facts. Uh, the other thing he had mentioned was the fact that uh, Dream's having to give away the truck because of taxes. Oh, that's, that's, that's the rumor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. I mean, it's like, I'm sure, I'm sure there's a, I'm sure there's a decent amount of sleeping around that happens at these things, which is very understandable because once you, once you get cleaned up, people smell really nice. People look really attractive. Uh, things happen yeah, when you're young. It comes and, back. Yeah. It's yeah. When you're young and, sex drive and, and, comes and back. horny, <laughs> when you're horny and lonely, you know, it's, it happens, you know, Jeez. so <laughs> Oh man, we might never know the, the actual truth of the matter. Did she have an orgy <laughs> with the four horsemen? Did she sleep with it? How many of the four horsemen did she sleep with? Was it all at once? Was it, you know, you don't who know got the either. sloppy seconds? <laughs> that's what I. That's what I need to know. <laughs> um, let's see what uh, other comments there are here from Chase Farrier. Uh, he has a couple questions as well. 
He did say on a personal note, I didn't, I don't care for the season, but it could have been much better if it was edited properly. Boo was extremely under edited. He was a lot funnier and goofy than shown. Earl himself was under edited. The context for the season was lost without the day one alliances and the Earl dreams and Cassandra alliance was not shown to be as strong as it actually was, which explains why Earl didn't force the tie to send Yao to fire, which he obviously would have won. Mm. That's fair. Yeah, I think all those things are fair. I mean, I think that um, I would agree. I was actually there was actually one thing that was sort of nagging in the back of my brain. But thanks for pr- bringing it up. Earl was very under edited for the winner of the season. I yeah. just feel like he there was moments where it's like he was like he was kind of sitting very like proud that he was dominant, but mm-hmm. like yeah, it was always like it was always framed like Earl and Yao Man, Earl and Yao Man, more Yao Man than Earl. And then, so it was like, yeah, that, that, that is an interesting, interesting thing to note. So. Yeah. And the fun fact that I did know about this season was there was only one person out of this cast who actually applied to be on Survivor. Every other person was recruited. <laughs> Do you have any, any guesses as to who the one, uh, the one applicant was? The one person who actually applied to be on Survivor. Um, <laughs> you got a one in nineteen I guess, shot. I have a one in nineteen shot. I mean, I don't know. Uh, it was not Melissa McNulty. It wasn't her. Okay. Uh, was it freaking? Was it Rocky? Was it Rocky? No, it was not Rocky. It was Papa Smurf, obviously. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah, didn't he mention that? Actually, I felt like that maybe that got mentioned. Yeah, you know, when he talked about like how he, how well, he got he, maybe he yeah, I think it might have been when they might have it might have been mentioned during the reunion. I, I don't remember. Yeah, no, he did but... show off that Survivor Fiji tattoo though. Yeah, yeah. he did. He's pretty freaking hype about it. <laughs> but yeah, pretty wild. The only the only one to actually apply. Wow, that's that's very interesting, huh? Yeah, never would have guessed. All right, let's look at some of the questions that. Chase Ferrier ass. Okay. Love it. Love hearing from him. Love from hearing from Survivor One, Two, Three, Four. Yes. Anyone else too? There's there's others, but uh had Dreams given up the immunity, Yao wins. He says it so matter of factly. Had Dreams given up the okay. immunity, Yao wins. Did Yao play a better game than Earl? It's tough to say. I, I think I think I favor Yao to win. Certainly, I think some of it may have come down to to Earl's argument. You know, if, could he have made a case that convinced people? I don't know. Um, but did he play a better game than Earl? I mean, it's hard to say that about someone who did get yeah. voted out. But um, yeah, there's a couple things that I weigh in, into that. Is that mm-hmm. in terms of, um, like I said, a weakness of Earl's is that he seemed willing to go to the end with him like when and only when he was like last second given this surprise opportunity to vote him out at four then he did it otherwise he seemed mm. like he would go to the end and pro- probably lose to Yao Man um, whereas Yao Man obviously was playing to win but also against yeah. Yao Man as he was he did receive the most votes at final five so they tried it once and then he made this deal with Dreams, but ultimately didn't work. So mm-hmm. um, he they, they actually voted him out properly. And so it's like it's the question of like Earl being like the the second highest on the hit list. Does that make him a better player, or is it? I don't know. I, to to me, I think I think Yao's riskier, chancier game I think maybe makes him a more interesting player overall because he did take risks like that. Like he, um, even sharing, I, I even to a degree like sharing all that information with Earl is a little bit of a risk. Um, but he weighed it as a as as a as a game because he was him and Earl just had such a close alliance. Um. I yeah I agree that that maybe maybe too big of a risk to to like rely on on somebody to win the immunity for you in the final four. Mm. Um, 
Yeah, but not necessarily that he was completely relying on him, but like that is a risky deal to make all the same. Um so Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I think uh, I I would I value a, a gutsy gutsy player. Yeah, I think I, I feel like Yao played a little harder maybe to a certain degree. He was willing to he was willing to even again make a deal when everyone had agreed that we're just going to give it to him anyway. But he was the he was the one that was like playing a villain so to speak by taking advantage of of that of that need to benefit himself. So it's like that that's that's gaming <laughs> as as they say that is, is gaming. It, it's gutsier but is it I better? So. Is it better? Yeah. If it's more I don't exciting, know. It's, it's it hard better? to say if it's better. It, I don't know if it's better. I mean, I think had it been literally anyone besides Dreams, it would have been better. I almost feel like. What do you mean the the deal? Like if it yeah, like if it had been like within almost anyone else, pretty much anyone else in this whole cast, you you could easily make the argument. Oh, of course, he's playing better because he's trusting them to do that, and they'll probably stick to their word. Unless it's like, I don't know, somebody that was going back in the word all the time. Like, oh, dreams. dreams. <laughs> yeah, so that, but that was his um, conscious decision to make that deal. Yeah. And I don't think it was yeah, like him I, banking I on the deal. I think it literally was just like a fail safe in case he doesn't win yeah. Final Four immunity. Yeah. You would hope that would cover him, but. So uh, Earl and Yao Man are both stubborn in their own ways in terms of what they, of what they wanted, I think, or how they played the mm. game. So. I don't know. To me, it's like it's almost even because I think that they because of that, because they both have different weaknesses that ultimately like sort of result in the same kind of could have resulted in a similar sort of outcome. It's just it ended up going it ended up flipping, I would say, in Earl's favor. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's it's tough. It's It's tough with the conversation. Earl is obviously a great winner regardless. Yeah, great. Fantastic. It's always hard because you want to. I generally say whoever makes it to the end gets the votes to win. They deserve to win. And you would generally like to think that makes them a better player than the people who didn't. But there are certain times where, like, just because you make it far doesn't mean you were good at the game. A lot of people were dragged to the end because they had no prospects of winning. Or, or like, take the Amazon. I don't think anyone would argue that Jenna Maraska was the best (laughs) player that season. It just happened to work out perfectly that way you know one <laughs> one immunity challenge makes a difference sometimes but yeah it's tough it's tough but i mean that's yeah. what makes them such a good duo because they both like definitely made it much better for themselves they both helped each other find idols you know they they shared a lot of information yeah and yeah even they they cover they they had each other's backs the whole time and that was kind of what made it really their dynamic was exciting, which to me, like I can understand why when you're editing the show, why you would want to emphasize that dynamic because it's, in, that is interesting. Like that's interesting t- TV. Yeah. Um, it's a bummer that it was at the sacrifice of everything else, but I mean, Earl did vote for yeah. Yao man. Ultimately he did vote him out did. when he could have made a tie. If he really he, wanted he could to have let taken let it. Yao man come to the end, but mm-hmm. he didn't want to do all that. No one wants to do yeah. that. <laughs> no one <laughs> Ain't wants nobody to get time for that. In the end like that. But, uh, what else? Uh, yeah. Where do the Edgardo and Stacy votes rank in the top votes of all time? So when Edgardo got voted out in the blind side, and Stacy got voted sweet. out because of Yao Man's idle play. I mean, both those are pretty hype. Um, Can we think of uh, more hype? Vote outs off the top of our head. More hype vote outs than that? Off the top, if I had sat and thought about it, Arthur I'd Fleck like, and, oh, yeah, and Chakron was... All Star Season 1 was pretty hype. <laughs> Arthur <laughs> Fleck? <laughs> that was pretty um, epic. Like... I mean, the, the 3 2 1 vote is pretty freaking hype, but um, yeah. that was that was extremely hype. I would say it's like, it's it, it, the, both of those. We're very exciting though. Those did those do rank as because it's satisfying to see a strategy that's so conniving and so like underhanded work so well. 
Yeah. Um, and it's also very satisfying to see somebody who's has a fail safe actually be able to make it work. So like it's it's funny, is this two sides of the same coin? It's using an idol and then completely missing the plot. Yeah. And then using an idol by reading everyone really well. Yeah, that's true. I didn't even think about that. We had we actually saw both yeah. sides of the coin where you saw a failed yeah. idol play and a successful idol play the season. Yeah, it's, and both those were really exciting. Those yeah. were like the most exciting votes of the, of the whole of both, the yeah, both of the whole season intertwined with the idol. So we have already seen how idol can uh, spice up the tribal council here. Sure. Yeah. And. Um, I mean, those those rank really high. I mean, I th- I think they're both top fivers at least. You know, uh, I think mm-hmm. they're they're right up there. I mean, yeah. they, they right made up, the right season up there with that one exciting. vote on Survivor Borneo, where like six different people got votes. <laughs> where people are just voting for <laughs> nonsense reasons. I, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> fucking, Next fucking, on the alphabet. Uh, all right. Yeah, I'm trying to think of uh, any more hype votes. Uh, I can't think of many. I mean, there was like, um, there was like, like uh, uh, the ter- Rob Sister ter- Nino flipping in the, the Amazon, where like they voted. Yeah, I mean, Alex that was out. pretty hype. That was pretty hype. Jamie's blind side because it was funny. Um, I think of, I think of, so the Survivor All Stars, the uh, Big Tom. <laughs> just the look back. <laughs> yeah, the look back. <laughs> I was like, oh, he just, he just, he just messed with Big Tom right there. Or uh, in Pearl Islands um, when Rupert gets voted out. Yeah, Rupert gets <laughs> well, voted out. So much for my dreams. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Aww. Yeah, I mean, there's definitely some fun moments in Pearl Islands uh, too. No, Pearl Island, yeah. Pearl Island's the whole, that whole time was, was pretty great. There's that time so. where Ian uh, dropped off of immunity after 12 hours and just told Tom he could vote him out and take Katie to the end. <laughs> 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 so, that's pretty cool. Oh, that was, that was so, that was so lame. <laughs> like the lamest, the lamest final challenge of all time. We were like, I was like, wow, this is really, this is kind of a neat challenge. And then just like, like six hours have passed. And mm-hmm. I was like, they're just, they're, this isn't gonna, this, nothing's gonna happen. I was <laughs> like, this is not interesting. Oh, and uh, yeah, it was like freaking middle of the night. Cook Islands, when uh, Yule ultimately flips Jonathan over and they vote out Nate. That was pretty fun. Oh, yeah. That's cool. Yeah, that was fun. Or, oh, when uh, in Guatemala, when Judd gets voted out and he said he hopes they'll get it. <laughs> eaten by crocodiles. <laughs> um, Joe, oh, good old Judd. Yeah, um, those, are, those are some of the highlights that come to mind. Those, those were, those are pretty good. But I Gardo and Stacy are right up there. They are. They really are right up there. Super high. Um, I was gonna say another one was was one freaking um. Oh, when what, what the heck was going on? It was uh, Janu, Janu being like, "I'm, I'm leaving." Yeah, that was good. Where it was just like a defined yeah, Stephanie is like, "I'm screwed." They're yeah. keeping her around even though she doesn't want to be here at all. And yeah. Janu's like, "Okay, I'll leave now." Yeah, I'll I see guess. myself out. I'll see myself. Foil, see myself foil out. your plans in the process. Yeah, it was also in. Uh... But, uh in Vanuatu I had a similarly titled episode it was the the Leanne blind side which was like they were they really turned the tables on Amy and Leanne and her group oh yeah it right was like Eliza okay. Twyla Scout and Chris came together and mm. made it happen and there's yeah. some good ones there's some good ones out there yeah there's some good ones out there yeah for sure is it possible that Earl threw the immunity to force dreams to make the decision now that if he says if he went on confessional and said something like that, I'm like, okay, Earl, you got this. All right, you're the you're the man. Yeah. But I mean, I don't now. see any evidence of that. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, he was a strong guy, but like that that looked like the most miserable thing that they were doing. Yeah. They they literally made that as miserable as possible. <laughs> so, I don't know. I mean, because I think he probably had to hold up the most weight. Probably. Yeah, wait. Yeah. No. Chase. Anybody? 
for Chase, this is a bad one. This is a bad question. Throw it out. <laughs> if he, you're telling me Earl threw the immunity before Yao Man even got out of the challenge. So <laughs> Yao Man easily could have won over Dreams there, and Dreams would have to yeah. make no such decision. Like, if you were going to throw the immunity to force Dreams to make the decision, you would wait out everybody but Dreams, at least. <laughs> <laughs> you to throw it and then yeah. Yao Man wins. It's like, no, no decision. Yeah. Whoops. How does the game play out without the team divide at final 10? Do we, I want to see Michelle. Do we see Michelle in the end game? Oh, yeah. I think oh, Michelle man. probably would have been used in the end game. I don't, but I don't know. It, it's interesting with the, with the added context of the, of the, um, the all black OG. alliance that it was. Oh. Well, I mean, there's that too. Maybe that would have been come up, you know. Uh, well, you had an orgy with us, so you know. Um. <laughs> oh, no, it hadn't happened yet. It was once they were voted out. Oh, but you know, oh, okay. <laughs> oh, oh, whatever. Maybe it would have happened there on the island instead. You know, the, yeah. the butterfly. Right, it's all cleaned up. Crazy. Well, hey, Bobby John and um, Jamie, Bobby John they and did have an, Jamie have sex and Ponte they, Rosa. They cl- <laughs> I mean, I they did, they one. were slapping each other, and they were they were holding hands and stuff, you know. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, anyway, I would like to um, think that, that Michelle would have been in it. Imagine, maybe she I had like something she cooking been. that we didn't even see. Like she would have pulled pulled out some cutthroat <laughs> gameplay, and like she would have been, she would have just taken out Earl and Yao Man, and gotten herself to the end in dominant fashion. Nine o o victory. Michelle wins. Been insane. Yeah, she was cooking. And she has an, and she just has an orgy with everyone. There you go. That's crazy. Cast your crew. The game changing yeah. move that that won her the game. Game changing move. <laughs> <laughs> um, what a weird, what a weird rumor. I still can't get over how bizarre that is. Dang, I need to hear from Michelle. Like, yeah, th- that's the question I need to ask her directly. Yeah. <laughs> Did you have an orgy? Did you at Ponderosa? have sex with any slash all of the horsemen in Ponderosa on Survivor PD? <laughs> Survivor. <laughs> and if you did, I mean, how was it? I mean, it just seems, I don't know. <laughs> a rocky road. <laughs> rocky, it's just yeah. a rocky road to redemption. Um, yeah, it would have been interesting to see it play out because uh, someone in this endgame would have had to get kicked out. And maybe things shaking up a little bit, if uh, mm. because you know Earl was close to all these people. He was cr- close to Yao Man, Cassandra, Michelle. Yeah. Well, I felt like Dreams wouldn't have been around for the ride probably at that point, right? Yeah, They've I kept mean, him well, around. literally, <laughs> if he had voted the way Mookie wanted, and Stacy would have been gone right, yeah. right then and there instead of Michelle. Yeah, right. Or well, well, if we're saying that in this world there was no split, it still was. It was looking like Boo or Stacy at the time, though. It was looking like Boo was probably yeah. the next person yeah, to Boo go. Yeah, Boo or Stacy. Yeah. Um. So. Yeah. It would, probably would have been more interesting, interesting, at least. But. Yeah. Um, you know, Might all for the message in a bottle. You know, the, these producers are down bad for a damn message in a bottle. They, they, they really the are. They're just it. like. You're just like freaking. They're just listening to hold all the momentum. SOS. Yeah. They're just listening to SOS by the police. That's all they can hear. Right. <laughs> That's all they can hear. All right. <clears throat> and then, um, all right. So that's it for the comments and questions that I know of. If I missed anything, uh, I should double check. Hold on. Let me double check that in uh, across all the different like episodes and stuff. There isn't anything I should mention. I do want to shout out a comment that Chase left on episode 8 of Survivor Fiji where right. Lisi gets voted out. Mm-hmm. Um, he said, Lisi is an underrated, horrible Survivor player. She had no social skills, had no game sense, <laughs> was ready to quit multiple times, gave the four horsemen the idol pretty much, and had multiple not-so-subtle racist comments and attitude, which carries over into her jury speech. Overall, horrible survivor player and probably not the best person ever. This other is beautiful. <laughs> she's, a, she's an underrated, <laughs> horrible person. Oh no! Trust me, I, I made my I made my position very clear. 
I never want to see her again. <laughs> I never, I never want to meet her. I think she'd be like the last person I'd want to meet on a street corner. Would be her. She'd, yeah. she'd be in the, in the, in the rankings. She just seems like an overall Little very Lisey, miserable person. But Lisi gave us gold, and Jeff had to shout her out for that. Like, <laughs> yeah, Lisey, you gave us gold too. An, another person we could always go to. <laughs> basically, <laughs> basically no. saying for good content is basically what he was saying. In yeah, for two thousand six. Yeah, for, G, for GC. <laughs> Good content. I mean, it was like it was horrible, awful stuff, and it was embarrassing and cringe. But man, it was good content. Cringe, yeah, <laughs> cringe queen. Cri- yeah, cringe <laughs> queen for sure of this season. Uh, and then one final piece of trivia I wanted to mention was that Fiji was supposed to have a family visit, like they usually do with the rewards uh, that they've done a few. Yeah, times. I was. That's some. That's interesting. They but, were, didn't have anything, but they like did that. not because of. Uh, some political turmoil going on in Fiji. There was like a coup d'etat going on, and so they <laughs> oh geez, they have to just okay, okay. you guys stay home. <laughs> no, you <can> stay home. <laughs> now, there's a lot going on here right now. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of a big deal. <laughs> that's so. Uh, whoops. Yeah. <laughs> right. Well, <laughs> oh, just a little coup d'etat <laughs> going on. <laughs> it's. All right. Uh, uh, it's time to give out some awards here uh, for Survivor Superlatives. All right, Superlatives. let's go. Let's do this. All right. So all season long, we've been tabulating the MVP award. Every episode, Alec awards an MVP for that episode. We actually forgot to do one for the reunion. Who could forget? Uh, off camera, he just gave it to Yao Man for no reason. And uh, <laughs> basically, I mean, that made it a tie for the MVP between Dreams and Yao Man. The MVP is okay, the season. All right. And it makes sense. Okay. Sounds good. That does kind of make a lot of sense, actually. And the two runners up with two MVPs each, we got Rocky and Alex. Uh, who could forget <laughs> also? <laughs> who could forget? I gave Alex. I must have given him some early some early gold, I think. Yes. He had, he had some some mid-game interesting stuff going on there so and now uh, how about rocky the, uh, rocky was the early game rocky was the early rocky game, so. was the first two episodes he was great he was yeah gold. yeah yeah and what a yeah. uh what a and heel then... turn for rocky too it's uh <laughs> what a yeah. heel turn what a heel turn and how about the pre-jury gem award this is awarded to anyone who did not make oh, is... the jewelry all right. This is the easiest. This is the easiest so, thing in the world for me to give. We've got to be clear who who did not make the jury. Uh, we got Jessica, Erica, Sylvia, Papa Smurf, Liliana, Rita, and Anthony. A lot of ahs. A lot of ah <laughs> ah names. What the heck's going on with yeah, that? Huh? Papa. Papa, <laughs> Jessica, Lisa, Sylvia, Sylvia Liliana. Rita, uh, well, Erica. unfortunately. None of those lovely ladies in Papa Smurf. I uh, get it. It is so clearly Anthony. None of the Oz. Yes. None of the Oz. I'm sorry. I I did like um, I did like uh Liliana, but no, Anthony's uh, Anthony uh, Anthony's got it. I mean, I liked him a lot. I don't know. I think yeah. he's just an entertaining guy. He always had a, a a funny quip. I. I found myself relating to him in a lot of ways. So, um, fair, fair yeah, enough. yeah. I mean, that's that's definitely in in previous seasons we would uh, people that were voted out before the merge were not part of the jury, so we wouldn't have had Rocky or Lisi on the jury either. But yeah, you know, they extended now for the final three, which we did have the final three again. Worth noting, yeah, because they. Seemingly, also they skimmed over because they went over so much in Cook Islands, but they seemingly blindsided them with the final three as well. Because yeah. I, don't, I don't think they would have seen the end of Cook Islands at this point. So uh, they did. They were expecting a final two, probably up till towards the end, and then made it the last last second. Oh, it's a final three, and so that that might also have something to do with why uh, Dreams went back on the the yeah, deal too. I, I think I think that's a us. That is a possibility. That you have the to finish start. line is right there, literally right there, yeah. between me keeping the immunity I already won and or, or giving it up. Yeah. yeah, yeah. All right. Okay. So, how about the cutie of the season award, Michelle? <laughs> 
Not even a contest. Michelle Yee. Yeah. That's it. She's she's just a cutie. I, I mean, I mean, orgy or not, I mean, she's just, she's just adorable. Does does so. the orgy up or lower her cutie level? About the same. It's just like she's so much cuter now. <laughs> it's just, it's a, it's a not really. Sinister smile. I mean, I mean. I mean, I'm not super down with the whole with that whole thing. There's just too many. There's just too many mix stuff getting mixed around too much, together. Too you much know? meat dangling around. Just like stuff. that one challenge this season. Just, yeah, there's a lot of meat dangling around. That's a little too much. Too much for me. There's a lot of sexual history all of a sudden. That's just it being introduced all at once. And I don't know. Yeah, and you can't I'm trust not, people. You're cool on a game really. Survivor. Who's to say they're you, telling you the truth? You can't trust about anyone. History. It's true. Yeah. <laughs> it's true. It's very true. So, all right. And anyway, then, uh, lastly, who would you award Alex favorite player award to? My boy. Okay, so my favorite player, I think I gotta give it to. I think I gotta give it to Yao Man. I mean, I think, Yao it's, Man I think it's right there. Yao Man. I, I'm a Yao Man. Yeah, Yao Man Chan. Yao Man Chan. Yeah. Man, <laughs> there we go. Yeah, there it is. Um. Yeah, I mean, I think he was just extremely entertaining uh, throughout the whole season. I think he played a uh, a very wily and and calculated game, and just Dare some say stuff coyote? he 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 put some uh, st- stuff out of his con- out of his control and uh, inopportune points. So yeah, but I mean, he's obviously done way better than a lot of the older players we've seen play the game, and he was like aware of that way from better. the start. Yeah, and so he immediately was like. Making himself valuable in these random niche challenges, like throwing spears and, yeah. and yeah. all these random skills he's bringing out. He was great. Love to see it. Yeah, he's great. All right, yeah. let's rank the seasons. Let's do some ranking. Okay. Yeah. So currently, Alex's season rankings are Pearl Islands, the Amazon, the Australian Outback, Vanuatu, Panama, Cook Islands, Borneo, Marquesas, Guatemala, All Stars, Palau, Africa. Thailand. What do you where do you think Fiji goes? Fiji for me is probably Hold mm. on, before you say that. I was thinking it might be fun if we actually name some like distinct positives and negatives for the season at the end of it. What are the biggest positives and negatives? Alright, so what are, okay. what what are your negatives for the season overall? negatives for the season overall i think the man i i think okay other than some of the stuff we've already talked about which i'll recap in a second here but i actually don't like the three-person final Hmm. i don't like it i i think that it it obviously or it sort of just maybe not obfuscates but it like it kind of just distracts like having three people is just too too much because ultimately in people's minds they're, they're either just between two or they've already made up their mind so i think having three people is just way too distracting mm-hmm. um and and i don't i don't like it. i mean both times we've had the third person is not getting any votes and in this case no one other than the winner got votes so it's just like to me it's just kind of a it's kind of a useless distraction uh, i think but um i would say i so i'm not a big fan of that i mean the the haves and have nots we already went into that i i think that's just such a such an awful it's such an, mm-hmm. it was such an awful tone to the beginning of the season um the random twists and uh uh what was the what was the other thing yeah, the like message in a bottle stuff, and then the whatever the other thing we talked about was the editing of the the alliances that we never saw. Yeah, yeah, I mean that that kind of puts a damper on it. Now that I know that, you know, that kind of just kind of soured even more to a degree. So, I would say those are yeah. those are all wor- very worthy negatives to really kind of nail this down. Positives, though, just a phenomenal cast overall. I mean, you had. You, you do have some like some maybe some people that are a little less exciting than others. Um, you know, Papa Smurf we didn't really get a whole lot of because he was he was ill. Um, but I think I think this speaks again to the, the I I found things to enjoy about watching even even people like Erica or Sylvia or Liliana. You know, early people were interesting to kind of watch and see. 
we got we got gems from the from the loud mouths of the group. Uh, we also had Lisi just there, um, but we had Rocky. Uh, we always give us gold. Both of them. Always, yeah. both of them just always gold. But it's it's just such an interesting, different dynamic um, that you just don't get with the with the same old, same old. And so to me, that that really just does stand out a lot. I think I think that that does a lot of heavy lifting. That. Um, this sort of save some of the duller moments. I mean, I loved watching Anthony. Like he was just, again, it was just seeing a guy that was kind of like me having to be out there and, and kind of, and kind of fend for it, mm-hmm. even though the odds were against him all the time. It was like that, you know, you just can't help. I just can't help, but root for somebody like that. And that that's always going to, going to stand out. It can always going to stand out for me. Um, mm-hmm. Things like that. And, um, and also uh, positive is uh, the 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 hidden immunity idol, the new form of it. Yeah, new format of the hidden immunity idol. That was by far the best thing. If they if they keep using this, got to be something that's very similar to that because I think they found the perfect balance of making it useful but not making it too powerful. Um, and then so. uh, another negative that I think we didn't really talk about so much, but it's the fact that. Uh, it becomes kind of one of those seasons where it's kind of rote. Um, once you hit the, after the merge, yeah. it's like, okay, we got Edgardo, Mookie, Alex, mm-hmm. uh, yep. Stacy, Boo. It's like nothing, yep. no crazy shakeups there really. Uh, even when yeah. they, they tried to a little bit, but then the man played the idol, like, but that wasn't until the final five. So you had a stretch of episodes where it was kind of like. He, he uh, early even said it at one point when it was like Mookie and Alex left. He's like, we got two people on death row just waiting to be, be voted out, basically. Yeah, that's what yeah. it was. Yeah. So. Yeah, I mean, there's not a whole lot you can do about that, unfortunately. So minus the two tribal things, council, yeah, and it wasn't the most exciting post merge, but. Yeah. Um, I would say that they've continued to up their game, uh, overall in terms of like challenges. Um, Some just like interesting a decent challenges. amount of variety. Yeah, I, I would say like they've. I think they found a, like a really good sweet spot in terms of the challenges. We don't have too many that aren't interesting to really watch. I feel like they found their groove in terms of filming it and making it readable and understandable to us. I mean, that's been the case for the last few seasons, but they they continue to do a really good job of that. I think. Um, Theming maybe not so much there. Um, a couple a couple of the challenges are pretty well themed, but I almost wonder if like the less cultural stuff this time around. I, I I did feel like there was maybe a little less like cultural Fijian stuff this time around, but I almost wonder if that has something specifically to do with that mm-hmm. the political turmoil that was going on. Mm-hmm. I, like that wouldn't shock me at all. They couldn't really like <laughs> get a whole lot of that going on, but. But they did like go in and like they donated stuff to like that. They they set up that classroom stuff, I guess, right? Yeah, that was kind of exciting. That was kind of nice. I like how Jeff like came out with the children, like he's running out with. Them. <laughs> yeah, here goes Jeff. He's yeah. one of the students. I would say like in terms of positive, you we see cast in general, but I think it's also worth noting specific yeah. people: Yaman and Earl. Yeah, great, great the duo. duo, and then Dreams just giving us constant Dreams. entertainment throughout the season. Dr- yeah. Dreams just a, just the the human embodiment of the wild card in a hand of poker. I mean, you never know who's got it and what's how's this going to get used and what what it's going to do to shake up everything. So and, yeah, and Cassandra saying mm-hmm. <laughs> that did make us laugh quite a lot. So <laughs> so like once I she noticed so it, good. You know, you, I mean, do we not talk about Cassandra you, enough? I mean, she did make it to the end. I mean, we probably didn't at a quiet zero votes. But how do you yeah. feel about how she played it in in general? I think she was more strategic than I think the edit let on. I think while she did sort of coast a little bit, I, I think um, she was trying to to wheel and deal at different times. But I think she just ultimately weighed her options that like kind of lying in wait the way she did was really the, the optimum way to play. Um, but yeah. I, I think she, in terms of one of these sort of like tag alongs, <laughs> she was okay. I mean, she, I kind of middle of the road, I would say in terms she of the play. Classic but... like Becky, Becky role here. 
to me yeah, last season. Yeah, pretty much. Like, yeah. see, maybe not as much as Becky instrumental, but she mm-hmm. seemed very much in the in the loop on what's going on, and then uh, just gets zero votes at the end next to the next to the guy. Yeah, the, the strategic yeah. leader. Yep. Mm-hmm. All right. So, with that being said, where was it stack against the rest of the seasons? I think this is like right around Palau for me. If it's above or below, I can't. I'm not sure. Um, I think I'm gonna go above Palau just under All Stars for me. I think that's kind of where I'm at with it. Interesting. Okay. All right. So yeah. So that makes it to the bottom, bottom four season so far. Mm. I see. I see. Yeah. It. It really. Like I said. I mean. I think. I think. It would be a lot. I think it would be down by Thailand had we not had the second half of the season be as exciting and interesting as it was. And and again, the cast does do a lot of heavy lifting for it as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think that is sort of one of the things that that kind of is a is a little bit of a downer. Um, especially finding out that it was under edited too, or at least the beginning. The beginning di- didn't have like key moments yeah. that would have been probably nice for context, you know. And even watching the without knowing that it's like okay people are just being voted out for stupid reasons like okay this person's bad at a challenge rita talks too much and then also yeah the haves versus have nots going on during this it's just right not it's the, just not a slog greatest. to watch it's a slog early on yeah. and then we reach the merge where there were a couple key exciting moments but other than that it also was kind of you know slow on the mm-hmm. less exciting trajectory but um, I would put it around a similar spot, maybe the exact same spot for me, but my, my rankings right now are Pearl Islands, Vanuatu, the Amazon, Borneo, Panama, Cook Islands, Marquesas, the Australian Outback, All Stars, Africa, Palau, Guatemala, Guatemala, and Thailand. So I will put it in the fourth position right above Palau for me. Mm. All right. But you have it. You have Africa higher than I do, and uh, we know. I'll put one it, of those ones. I'll, I'll p- no. hmm. it might be above Africa for me. Hmm. Africa is one of those seasons that I need to go back. We need. I almost feel like we need to go back and watch again. Maybe I should just back. do that on my off time. Yeah, I would like on my that. off time. Just go cool back and watch if we it. We could have done because it's annoying that we've done reactions for everything since Thailand. We missed yeah. the first four where we could have had a more yeah. comprehensive. Uh, look back it'd be interesting even to see our our review or discussion on it it was so long ago now mm. so i'm gonna put it at bottom five all right it's my bottom five okay. season which is weird to say because i actually really at the time really enjoyed fiji when i was going mm. through these seasons for the first time i mm-hmm. was like like um panama cook islands fiji i'm like bang 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 like in all of them but if you really look at it, um, especially on a week-to-week basis, I, I can feel it's not as good as when I like binged it for the most part. Yeah, Bin- binging definitely has a has a benefit, especially in terms of like memory. I think that's like why we were able to sort of get away with doing kind of what we did with the reviews is that we were binging it sort of. You know, we would watch like four or five, six, sometimes even six episodes at a time. So. Um, I mean, it's like rough week to week early on, where it's like Anthony voted out in a miserable episode, Rocky voted out, Lisi voted out. I'm like, oof. Yeah. It's a rough stretch there. All right, now, <laughs> yeah. uh, how about the winners? Currently, your winner rankings are Richard, Yule, Brian, Tom, Chris, Sandra, Vesepia, Tina, Aris, Ethan, Danny, Amber, Jenna. Mm-hmm. Where does Earl go? In the winner rankings, Earl is up there. I think I'm gonna put Earl. Oh man, this is tough. Because Earl didn't have to do any like landsliding, turning arounds like Chris did. He wasn't as dominant as Tom, but he was very good, like Tom. In a lot of ways, he didn't like win any immunities, which is interesting. Like Not Tom quite dominated as by as that. Brian. Way. Not. <laughs> and there's way more charming than Brian, but Brian was just Brian is just a, a freaking android. So, 
Um, I think I'm gonna put him. I think I'm gonna put him above Chris. Oh. I think. I think I'm putting him above Chris, Both. below Tom. The number five spot. spot. <laughs> number five spot, yeah. So you have Richard, then Yule, then Brian, then Tom, then Earl. We're above Chris. Interesting. Uh, my rankings are currently Richard, Tom, Yule, Brian, Chris, Tina, Sandra, Vesepia, Aris, Ethan, Danny, and Virginia. The classic bottom five. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I put him very high. I think he's very close to, he's close to Yule for me in terms of they were at the head of everything that went on throughout the season. And there's also like a yeah. couple things that could have gone wrong. Uh, like him potentially having to go against Yao Man and maybe losing. And for Yule, it's just kind of like at the end, he did, there was a certain reliance on the idol and the fact that that surprise final three, let him just kind of go right to final three without ever being in danger. Um, little things like that. Mm. So it's really close between those two for me. I think I'm going to put him below Yule. Okay. Right below you. I think that's honestly, that's honestly a pretty good spot. Number four um, spot. I'm very, I could easily, you and Ethan, have, especially being back to back, are very similar spots to me as really solid winners. Uh, you, you, and, you and Earl, you mean? <laughs> you said you and Ethan. You and Ethan. You and yes. Ethan are, are really similar in a Yule lot of ways. Earl, yeah. So there you have it. Um, yeah. When I really is hard to think because I'm trying to think when will Richard ever be dethroned here. Because like there's still there's, there's he's just like such an anomaly in terms of like there's yeah. no blueprint before him he set the blueprint. It's true, it's it's hard. I mean I think I think because like I could argue that some of these reading... were higher than him in terms of like yeah being more dominant and you yeah know, I, more I, think, I think I think next next season is fifteen. I think that that should call for maybe a little bit more reanalysis in terms of. I think I've rearranged a little bit. Even last season, I think I rearranged somewhat. Yeah, I rearranged. But I think I'm gonna keep it. it. I'm gonna keep it here for now. I think next season we'll look into to doing a, a another sort of rearrangement in, in my book, and at least in terms of my stuff. So mm-hmm. uh, I do want to at some point, like how we did the top ten survivor players video, I would like to do a video like breaking down like uh, ranking all the seasons and winners in like a tier list, maybe. And maybe have a mm-hmm. more easy visual representation to use moving forward. I'd like to do that at some point. Maybe between before the end of the next season, we could do that. Um, but speaking of, we do have a new tradition now <laughs> where we have the yep. your top ten favorite Survivor players list, in which you can update yep. each season whether you want to add someone or not. And so, right now, your list is. Boston Rob, Rupert, Rob Sister Nino, Stephanie, Richard Hatch, Johnny Fairplay, Sari, Yule, Rafe, and Kathy. So, does anyone from Fiji make it in to the top ten? I like Kathy a lot, but I think I think Yao Man is gonna has to has to. I think Yao Man might be in here now. Does he just take the number ten spot, or does he overtake anyone else? I think I think what I'm gonna go I think what I'm gonna go go for is Kathy gets knocked down gets knocked out I think Rafe will drop down to ten and I think I'll put Yao Man at nine for now. We'll right. see how I feel. How's that look? Jesus. Oh my gosh, I'm dropping things. <laughs> that looks good. I think that looks good. Yeah, I don't I don't feel any need to switch anything around. At the moment, what a great group we got here! I think you yeah. have uh, you have S- Stephanie higher than I would have her. I I don't know if I would even have her in my top ten personally, but everyone else, um, I am agree with in yeah. agreement with. Yeah. Yeah, I like Stephanie a lot. I know I, I kind of as time goes on, I might I might she might she might start coming down a little bit, but uh, I don't know. Still still positive. Still positive thoughts overall 
Uh, and then, yeah, um, but you can't go wrong with the two Robs, Rupert, Johnny, Siri, yeah. Yule, Yao Man. Yeah, they're great. I like Rafe, and I know I like Rafe a lot. I think he's yeah. Mm-hmm. I just I don't know. He's yeah. he's always this is, uh, always my favorite from the screenplay for Uncharted was was something else. <laughs> 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 the Wheel of Time. The Wheel of Time. <laughs> uh. All right, so I think that's it. Just, yeah, just to just to let you know, though, in case you think I forgot, I did. We did uh, decide to probably retire the favorite intro shot of the year because it's like the yeah. the it's so sparingly it's... seen, and then it's hard to even remember enough to to give an accurate award for that. I think. Yeah, when they're only showing it at, in like in like three or four episodes in the whole season, it's like how, how am I supposed to remember? <laughs> And we did forget to, to do remember. the power rankings, so I guess we can reassess if we want to we reintroduce it next season or not. But we should, we definitely should. I, uh, I, I like having that as an idea. I'm gonna be real. This season, it wouldn't have been all that interesting. So mm-hmm. it's this season missing out on it. Probably not like the most disappointing thing of all time. I, I do think we should reintroduce it though. I think it's just a way for me to continue to sort of assess and think about the game. So you think Yao Man or Earl would have been at the top of the majority of the season? Yeah, I think it would have been Yao Man. Yao Man or Earl might have flipped back and forth a little bit depending on how I felt through the episodes, but they definitely would have been top two. De- definitely. I think I probably would have had Yao Man. Because people would talk about Yao Man, but no one ever talked about Earl. Like, we need to get Earl out, which is yeah. kind of like, it's true. you know, it's very credit true. to Earl as well. Um, yeah. If, you, if you're going to be in a duo that's so inseparable, you want to be like the second. Uh, in the second rung of that duo in terms of like everyone's targets. So mm. that's where you want to be, but yeah, thank you for watching this and, uh, seeing it through yeah, with us. Thanks. A lot of fun stuff to talk about. And if, if you have any suggestions on future things we could, uh, add, you know, like the, like the power rankings that we do each episode, uh, feel free to let us know or, um, and then come back next week for the premiere of survivor china right you could do uh, to see i'm super excited for that i know I talked about it during the during the reunion yeah. but i'm pretty pretty excited for to see where that goes so totally absolutely. different setting that we've had before absolutely and uh as always leave a comment below and uh I, i'm sure i missed some you know there's some that i just couldn't read throughout the season um, like a, we usually read uh, as many comments as we can on the Talk Around podcast at the end of each episode, but you know some are like a little spoilery, maybe for this season, maybe for future seasons. So I didn't include them. I tried to get as much included in this review as possible. So I might have missed some things. Sorry if I did, but uh, try to be as comprehensive as possible. And then uh, yeah, if you want more Survivor from us or anything in general. Check out the channel. We've got a lot of playlists for everything. And yeah. Uh, is there any video you recommend our viewers watch next time? In the meantime? Uh, in the meantime, yeah, go check out our Survival Co- our Cook Islands review. Uh, that was another beefy episode. This is beefy. Thanks for thanks for sticking with yeah. us if you stuck with us this long. Because this is a beefy one. Uh, I think we had a lot to talk about. And I, I I feel like I learned stuff about the season too, which is kind of kind of fun to, to have happen. But yeah, check out check out our Cook Islands review. You know, um, it's kind of fun. Down. It's fun, but you would like the editors to include these things. You know, you shouldn't have to learn it after the season. That's also yeah, uh, <laughs> really. What the heck? What's going on with that? It's like, Don't oh, do that. Found, I just found out the whole season was different afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I found out they just left out a key implement at the very beginning of the season. Yeah, would have been nice to know. Uh, do oh. better. Anyway, and this is one of the more egregious cases I've heard in terms of like editing. Yeah. Poor editing. You know, mm. there have been definitely, there's definitely people throughout history that people always say, like, this person was under edited. This person was under edited. This person was over edited, you know. But uh, in terms of leasing, leaving out a whole significant portion of our, our basically yeah. our plot of the story, it's uh, yeah. pretty bad. Yeah, you what? didn't get the chapter. You basically missed out on chap like half of chapter one, basically. Yeah. So yeah. you're like, wait a minute, and okay. It's I, kind I, of yeah, like right. inera- inaccurate like backstories on some of our character characters that weren't yeah. fully fleshed out. Yeah. 
So, but had fun going through the season with you, regardless. Yeah, some great times. Likewise. And thank you for watching and joining us. All right. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Uh, like the video if you enjoyed. Subscribe to the channel for more. Share this with your friends and your family. All right. Everybody gather around. Yeah. Have a rip right. roaring good time listening <laughs> to Survivor. I was talking about not, Survivor. Not like you know, uh, maybe like appropriate age up family. You know, because we do occasionally talk about orgies on the channel. <laughs> It's true. We do talk, <laughs> to talk about orgies and, you know, we swear and stuff. So, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> so you could just say the orgies or, or like something else. Like it's like a yeah. game that they played upon Rosa. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. oh, they played orgies. I love. I mean, it was a game. It was a kids. game of a sort. Yeah, it was a game of a sort they played. Yeah. <laughs> the oldest game. So. Oh, yeah. All right. Until next time. Take care of yourself. All right. All right.